All right. Well, today we have a guest speaker. His name is Quinn Bay. He's my nephew, so I get to give him a hug. He graduated from Weber High School, sat right there where Spencer's sitting. He had to take my class. How pitiful is that to have your aunt as a teacher? But he, uh, when he was here at Weber High, he did choir. He's the elite choir member. Brianna would appreciate that. She's in choir, right? No? All right. I thought I saw you in choir. He also did football, so James would appreciate that. And then he uh, did art. He was a really good artist, still is a really good artist. So he graduated in 2002, and then he went on to Weber State to become a medical lab scientist. So I picked on him to come talk to us. You guys, he drove up from Harriman, which is an hour and a half commute, to come talk to us today. So let's thank him for sharing his knowledge with us. Okay, <clears throat> so I, I know the best way for us to go forward is probably to get to know each other just a little bit better. And without a doubt, I know the best way to do that is for us to swap fluids. So I need everyone to get all their chairs and come up here and swap some fluids with me. No, I'm serious, come on, get up, let's go. So what we're going to do is we're going to grab, go ahead and grab a, a vial. There you go. Come on, come on, come on. We're going to use as much time as we got. Yep. Okay, everyone come to me, come to me, come to me. Yeah, so take one. And what you're going to do is... Okay, did everyone... Oh. One more, boom. Okay, so <clears throat> let me show you how to swap fluids. The best way to swap fluids uh, with each other is to probably ask for permission. Can I swap fluids with you? Okay. And you put some fluids and then you can grab some of yours and put it in the one. Okay. Okay. Excellent. That's swapping fluids. Okay, so I need everyone to start swapping fluids. I want people from this side, to that side, or there. <clears throat> can I swap fluids with you? Thank you. I don't hear enough talking or moving. <laughs> <laughs> so okay, get about get about two, uh, uh, three or five people. Excellent. All right. Isn't swapping fluids fun? This is awesome. <laughs> Okay, go ahead and finish swapping food to the last person, and then go ahead and find your seats a little bit. Oh, keep them. Hang on for a moment. Was that fun, guys? Isn't swapping fluids fun? Okay, okay. So obviously, you guys are smart. You know what I just did to you, right? I obviously contaminated you. So what I want you to do is go ahead and pass that down. Pass that down. And what you're going to do here is you're going to add one drop like this. You go, Kajiga. And if it turns yellow like that, I contaminated you. Okay? So go ahead. I'll help out. Do you have another one of those? I can go around with it. Oh, there we go. It's coming back. Lucky. Did everyone get, get dropped? All right. What do we got here? Let's see. There's just three. Go ahead and give it a little caffeine mix. Yeah, there's only three of them. Do we need to go to the back? Okay, so anyone who has red, go ahead and stand up. Interesting. Very one, interesting. We're going to wait one more second. Okay. Yes, yes. <clears throat> I think that looks red, right? Go ahead and stand up. Okay, so there's the red group. Go ahead and sit down. Yellow group, go ahead and stand up. I'm part of the yellow group. Okay, so this is what happens, and this is kind of what I do as a matter of 11, 20 seconds. So you go ahead and sit down. So, if we're looking at going to throw that in there and pass it back, and we'll collect all those. So that's what we do as medical laboratory scientists. I'm going to click down here. When I tell people, like, Quinn, hey, you work at the hospital. Are you a doctor or are you a nurse? I'm like, no, no. There's lots of different fields. I'm a medical laboratory scientist. 
also it used to be referred to as a medical technologist, and then the associates was an NLT or a medical laboratory technologist so, or technicians. So the the difference is is what we do is we actually look for the detection, diagnose, and treatment of disease. Okay. So what we just did there is we swapped fluids, right? We found out, normally I like to see like when people from over here go over there. So what we have here is kind of like is isolation, right? So what's been going around right now? COVID. COVID. Dumb, right? So what kind of fluid could this have been? This clear fluid that, that we were swapping around from the human body. Not just water, but from the human body. Mucus. Mucus, maybe. Like a very dilute. Anything else? Oh, it's a hot day today. Sweat. Could be sweat. That was the saddest show I've ever seen. Tears. Tears. Also cerebral spinal fluid. Uh, the cerebral spinal fluid that feeds your brain is mainly just sugar water. I'm sorry, I'm in your way. The sugar water, and that's what cerebral spinal fluid would look like. Anyone know of anyone who's had meningitis? No? No one? Oh, you did? Was it viral or bacterial? Uh, I'm pretty sure it was bacterial. Bacterial. Oh, terrible. It's, uh, it's super painful, very lethal, can actually cause lots of problems. Did they survive? Mm -hmm. That's good news. Um, or it could also be um, saliva, right? So what kind of things could be transmitted in saliva? Can you think of anything? Germs. Germs. Anything specific? Uh, my throat feels terrible. Ugh. Maybe like strep throat? Have you guys ever heard of mono? Mm -hmm. Anyone? Know anyone else who had mono, not myself? <laughs> no? Okay. Um, so, mono. What is, all, what is mono also called? Kissing Say it loud. Kissing disease. The kissing disease. So, this could be like mono, right? Or COVID, right? This is how things are spread. Well, here's the, here's the thing. So, I got mono in college. <clears throat> That's a completely different story. I actually gave it to my wife. But, um, so that's what we do. We work in hospitals or clinics or research facilities, and we're looking for what's making you sick, why it's making you sick, and is the treatment working, are you getting better, or are you getting worse? So the major part of my, my job is to do that. Can you see this okay? Is it showing up? Thanks. Okay. How about you? Can you guys read it okay? So job description, is, am I okay to move on? So. Anything that comes from the human body, we treat that. So if you guys have ever seen this old show called House, and he's like, run the tests. I can tell you there's been five doctors that have been in the laboratory. Okay? So there are fleets of teams of medical laboratory scientists who are running tests, or respiratory therapists, or rad radiologists, and all these different people with the specific skills and, uh, to do stuff. And we're looking for that, that disease. Our, laboratory analysis is broken up to different pieces and parts, right? So we might focus on blood chemistry or hematology, the actual cell uh, components, blood bank if you need transfusions or infusions, um, or if uh, you have chemotherapy type stuff. Um, you could be in education um, or point of care, body fluids such as like uh, supraspinal tap uh, and things like this or research. So there's lots of different fields that we use different technology to, to allow us to do this. We do this both with machines that do it automatically or manually where we actually hand do a lot of these tests. So you guys feel like, you guys look like you're glazing over. So let's, let's go to your analysis. Let's go. Come on. Follow me. Come on. Alright. I don't bite, I promise. All right, are we good? Yep. Okay. So in the morning, what I do is I would go into the hospital, especially when I worked at the big hospital. I'd go into the, the schedule and I'd look where it's working, okay? And I'd be like, oh, urinalysis. So I'd go over to urinalysis. And at urinalysis, uh, we do UAs. And the first thing that we do is we take our urine and we do a chemical testing on it, right? And these chemical tests allow us to get a, an overview of what your body is doing. Do you guys remember or know what blood is, or what urine is? It's, um, it's waste that's from your blood. Exactly, it's filtered blood. Okay, so here's the question. Should you have uh, gremlins in your blood? 
Should it be sterile? Should your blood be sterile that's inside your body? Should you guys have bacteria in your blood? No, right? That would be a bad thing. So that means that your urine is also, if it's filtered right, right, your body's working, it should also be sterile, which it generally is. Now, there's times where, like, it's not sterile, right? You could have uh, UTI, a urinary tract infection, or something going on, right? So we'll use these chemical tests to check it out. So leukocyte esterase, we're looking for white blood cells, right? Leukocytes. Or we might look for nitriting nitrates to see if a nitriting bacteria is actually present in the bladder. It takes four hours for that to happen. Or like the pH. Because your urine actually balances your pH, it's water, it's urea, it's blood products that are soluble um, as your liver's working, and stuff like that. Or glucose. Diabetes. Does anyone know anyone with diabetes? Boom. What kind? Uh, I know somebody with type 1 and type 2. Type 1, type 2? I think type 2. Okay, awesome. So do you guys know the difference between type 1 type 2? Mm -hmm. What's the difference? Uh, type 1, you're born with diabetes, and type 2, you develop it. That is correct. So type 1, ipidus, is uh, insulin deficiency. So that means uh, insulin needs to be connected to active transport and get the glucose into the body so it can be metabolized. Whereas in type 2, mellitus, meaning syrup or sweet, right? It means the receptors have been stretched out or, or are messed up in some way, and so that insulin that you already have in your body can't bind and get the glucose across. So what does your body start to eat if it can't eat the sugar that's in your bloodstream? Yeah, that would be really nice if you so skinny. Um, fats are really hard to break down. So what does it eat? Oh, muscle. So ketones, people in like basically starvation. So one of the things we'll do, we'll do this, we'll do a chemical test, um, and then we'll do a microscope and we'll look at it underneath the microscope and we might do other tests. But actually in the old days with diabetes mellitus, what they used to do with it being sweet is it actually taste the urine to see if they could taste the oh. apple juice. Oh. Um, to see if they could taste <laughs> the glucose Sigh. off the urine. And they'd actually check, t test that because that would tell someone. If we had more time, but because it's shortened day, we would do a cool little test to show we do this with infants and babies, the reducing sugars that are in here, and uh, but unfortunately we're going to have to skip it, okay? Um, because if the baby is starving and not utilizing glucose due to a genetic disorder, we want to get in front of that and actually try and see if we can help the baby. So what we have here is more testing that we can do on urine. It's like our random drug screen, which we're going to give every one of you, right? No, no, finished. But we do drug screens at the, the hospital. Let me just give you a little caveat. If you're doing drugs and you go to the hospital because you're have a problem, we are going to know about it, okay? We're going to send it off from a spec, we're going to know about it. Be adult. We're trying to help you. If you tell us what you're taking, we can help you um, and just be honest instead of trying to hide stuff, okay? Sound good? Questions, concerns, insults? Awesome. Let's go ahead and go back to our seats. Was this kind of fun? Okay. <laughs> I had a poppy seed muffin this morning. Uh -oh. Oh, you're in. No, I'm just joking. Okay, so we have the different departments. So what that means is in my career, with all these different departments, um, normally you're not just covering one. So like our urinalysis bench at the big laboratory, I did urinalysis and coagulation together, um, which that had uh, lots of different testing that I would have to do and some manual testing that I have to do. Okay. So you're generally never just in one department unless you're at a big reference lab like AURP or AROP. Um, and so like my field right now, I'm a chemist. And my chemistry department, I do chemistry, molecular. I do all of the manual testings for like strep throat or mono or HIV um, infections, um, fecal occult bloods. This is cancer of the GI tract. Osmolalities has to do with like your renal function and how your body is actually clearing. I think, did you have a question on the osmolality or like things? Mm -hmm. Someone over here had, had a question last time. And then uh, antigenicity testing. So like the, the COVID and the PCR COVID testing for clues, PCRs, RSVs, okay? So uh, that's what I do in my, my uh, specific field. And with chemistry, we use a lot of different like test methodologies, whether it's uh, potentiometric, which is uh, electrodes, photometric, which is color changes, kind of like what we did here with our little pH test, or ELISA, which is chemoluminescence, based upon the functional groups 
or what we're looking for in the reaction, we can actually get light that it emits. And uh, you actually will look at that light, the scatter plot, and see what we have in there. Okay? Kind of complicated, sciencey stuff, but it's pretty, pretty neat stuff. Okay? So a normal day, my day starts at 5 a.m. Um, is where I get there, and when I get in, I actually do maintenance. And this could be anything from cleaning, documentation, adjusting, restocking, unloading reagents, uh, putting new consumables, or checking the water to make sure that it's uh, chemical grade, reagent grade water. Um, after I do that, I would do something called a calibration. And what that does is it establishes a relationship between the reagent lot and the analyzer, which is all the pistons, probes, lights, uh, lasers, uh, tubing, and all that stuff, okay? And all the functional uh, uh, parts of it. Once I build that relationship, okay, then we have a tolerance between that relationship that we're allowed. Kind of like when you're driving a car, you have lines on this side and lines on that side, and you can drive anywhere in between the lines. Down the middle is the best, right? But we run QC at both the low, middle, and high end to make sure that we have control over this relationship with the analyzer. And this is whether it's hematology, blood bank, uh, chemistry, or any of those other things. So that's calibration QC. And no matter how busy the lab is, this has to be done every single day. So a lot of my day is making sure that we're giving good results. So now when we're getting those results, we want to test those results. And if there's something abnormal, I might retest them, or change the test, or upgrade the test, or treat the test. Such as someone was like, let's say they have pancreatitis, and they can't emulsify the fats out of their bloodstream. We can actually treat that to get the chylomicrons out and the lipids out so that we can actually test the other things or issues like, let's say the blood's clotted uh, or the serum is clotted, and we need to get that, that out. So, uh, or I mean the plasma is clotted, I need to get that out. So, um, manual tests and other validations might have to come up. I'm actually uh, an advanced medical laboratory scientist. I'm on the, the team uh, or the council for the entire Intermountain Region Hospital for Chemistry. So I help make decisions and rules and regulations for, for how we do practices with the hospital. And then I am the leading chemist for the Alta View Hospital as well. So when my buddy, um, or they go off to the, the lunch, um, or Brooke, she has to leave, I'll cover all the benches as well. So anyone going into the healthcare field? Okay, what? I don't know yet. <laughs> but somewhere in it? Does anyone know? Uh, I'm planning on going to bed. Biomedical engineering, what combat like that? Uh, I want to be an OR nurse. OR nurse. So with OR nurse, so just when you call us, you saw all the different like areas that we have, you know what I mean? Be patient with this, because we do 4,000 specimens a day at the big hospitals. Bless, but we're doing all these different departments. We're going to be on the same page, but give us time to get on the same page, if that makes sense, because of just the, the scope that we cover with everyone. Okay? Questions, concerns, insults? We good? Okay. Awesome. Oh, also, I used to work a seven on, seven off schedule. So there's lots of flexibility with like the scheduling-ish. Seven on, seven off is where you work 10 hour days, seven days a week straight, and then you get two day, uh, you get time off. But when I work nights, I'd spend one day transitioning on to a grave ship, and one day transitioning off, and then I'd have the rest of the time to myself. When I used to have the day shift schedule, this was awesome. Because I'd just come home that first day, I would do all the dishes and vacuum, and then I had the rest of the time to do everything else that I wanted to do. But you are pretty pretty hammered by the end of those days. And 16 hours is kind of where they cut you off because I did a couple of 16 hour days. Or if you want to go on vacation, I went to Hawaii, I worked 11 days straight. That's what it's done. So 11, 10 hour days in a row. So, all right. Yeah, I think that's good. Also, laboratory never closes down. 24 seven, seven days a week, always have to have someone there. My work actually never ends. I just tag someone out, tell them what's going on, and I leave while they pick up right where I left off because you can't shut it down, if that makes any sense. Okay, so we talked about urinalysis. So if we were to do the dipstick and we saw hemoglobin, the hemoglobin, I would put it under a microscope and I would look for the blood. Then I do a, a calculation on how much blood is there, but now we want to know why it's there, right? Because that's more important. Could the female or the older gentleman have a yeast infection, right? Or do they have calcium oxide history? Anyone know anyone who had a kidney stone? Was it someone else? Um, it was actually a teacher. She oh, okay. it's really terrible. Because I worked Grace shift, I actually, three of my friends and I all got 
um, kidney stones. 4,000 specimens a shift, only four of us on graves. We had to like derobe basically and wash out to go downstairs to get water and then come back up so we rarely left and so we didn't hydrate enough and so we precipitate uh, kidney stones in our, ki in, in our renal pelvis of our kidneys and they come out by pressure and cutting you all the way down to your bladder and it's terribly painful and then they get to come out through the urethra which is extra special so that's super fun. So we want to know why, it, why it's there and so that we can, we can treat and help people. So we're going to kind of go through this a little bit. Microbiology, isolation, we want to isolate the microbiology and then we would stain it and depending on how it stains we know what type of bacteria we have. Okay? So that's culture and then what we would do after we culture is we do something called the sensitivity to see what they're sensitive to. Any of you guys, uh, someone hates something that they eat, what's one thing that you can't stand? What? Bananas. Bananas. Like Anyone else have anything that they don't like? Boom. Mushrooms. Mushrooms. Aren't they terrible eukaryotes? Like I know what they are or I know where they're grown and they taste like meat. So yeah, it's more of a texture thing. So bacteria are the same way. So here's a McConkie plate. This is for enterics. So if you were to have a perforated bowel, um, that bacteria would grow on this. It's got uh, specific food products that they're picky eating, picky eaters. Whereas like a sheep's blood auditor like this is something for like just rapid streps or, or step, streps and staffs, you know what I mean, they'll eat and can break down blood products. And depending on how they break down the blood products, we'll let us know. And then we put them in the perfect environment. So I think if they were a high school student, we'd put them in front of a television in a basement somewhere and they would grow. I'm just joking. Um, so that's kind of how we do these type of, of tests. So Kirby Bauer plates has to do with like what antibiotic do we want to use, I mean. Have you guys ever heard of like MRSA? Okay, so you see this F. So these are zone of inhibition. So this is vancomycin, this looks like amoxicillin. Okay, so you can see that this vancomycin is working really, really good, whereas amoxicillin isn't doing anything to this bacteria. And instead of getting isolation, they want a control on. So we're choosing that. So F, you can see how there's like a haze here. This is kind of like a MRSA, a methicillin resistant Staph aureus. How do you get rid of a bacteria that can't be treated with antibiotic? You have to take them. Yeah, you can amputate or bereavement. It's where you cut out the necrotic tissue and you take some of the healthy tissue with you and hoping that it doesn't spread. Terrible stuff. So this is kind of what we do. So let's get back into, so hematology is the next one. Uh, let's go ahead and go over to hematology and then we'll get back to it because I feel like you guys are glazing over again. So let's go over to hematology. Oh, first question. Anyone squeamish to blood? Stuff like that? They don't, can't handle a drop of blood. Okay, come on over. Okay, over on this side, we have gloves on here, this side and the gloves on that side. Please go get yourself a set of gloves in the size of your preference. We've got smalls, we've got mediums, we've got extra smalls if you've got hobbity hands. Did you just say hobbity hands? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I've never heard that before. Hobbit hands. Okay. If you say someone has hobbit feet, it means something completely different. Okay. Everyone come around. Okay. So, we're going to take this and mix them up. Make sure they're real mixed. These are called helicopter tops is what we call them. And they perforate the, the, the plug in the, in the bottom. And so you're going to turn it upside down, and very gently, I want you to take the frosted slide, okay, so there's a frosted edge, you're going to take this, and you're very going to gently put a little baby drop of blood on the slide, okay? And what do we do in the laboratory? So this was run on the machine, and we saw something abnormal with either the white count or the red count, or just the general population. I would want to make a slide. So I'd check the patient's name, and I'd write that all on this frosted edge, okay, so that we know who we're treating. Then I would take this slide, and I'm going to grab it, and I'm going to anchor my base slide. And this is kind of like you're driving a car for the first time. And you see how we're going to slide right here like this? This is like I'm driving a car. I'm going to back up, uh, bump into something, let that flash across, and go forward nice and smooth like that. Okay? 
slow is smooth, smooth is fast. And this is what we want, a little bit of a feathered edge like that, where we can see. You want a thumbprint, that was a terrible slide. And just so you know, this is really kind of difficult because uh, it took me a semester to get really good at that. That's a little bit better. See that kind of thumbprint that we're looking for? Okay, everyone uh, come around. Let's get you around. Come all the way around on both sides, and we'll help each other out, kind of get these slides together so we can make some slides. Yeah, so you're just going to place a small drop near the yellow slide or the frosted slide. Just a tiny, teeny, tiny drop. Perfect. If it's a little bit big, and you want to go straight down, just like a flat surface like that. So barely perfect. If it's a little bit big, what I want you to do is increase the angle so that when you push it, it will run short. If, you, if it's teeny, tiny or small, you want to decrease your angle so it will run long. Drop right there. And remember, you're pushing away from yourself. So you're going to put the slide, go back and forth, come back, touch the blood, it'll flash across, push forward nice and smooth. And then you saw how it kind of tilted a little bit on you. But that's kind of how you make a smear. And you have to anchor it so that it actually doesn't want to move on you. Touch, push forward. Sweet. Okay, once you're done with that, what I want you to do to take your gloves off, you're going to take your glove, you're going to wrap that glove inside of itself, wad that glove into this hand, and you're going to turn that one inside out. So once you've done it, go ahead and uh, throw your, your spent slides in here, I'll take care of them, and move out so we can have everyone else go ahead and go in there. Is this kind of fun, guys? Did you guys get to the play? Okay. <clears throat> so you guys looked at specimens like this, for our histology lab. Liquid blood tissue. Okay, so if we were to actually stain these, that would make them completely inert. And you guys could take them home and put them on your fridge, because they would kill everything during the staining process. And you put it on the fridge and your parents would weep at how amazing you guys are. But unfortunately, since we're not staining them, we're gonna use universal precautions and just trash it. Was that kind of fun, guys? Yeah. All right. So check this out. So we do the analysis, right? And if there's anything abnormal, this is what we do. We make a smear and we stain it. And we get something like this, where you can see your eosinophils for like allergies. Anyone allergic to something? Ketamine. What? Ketamine? Ketamine. Wow. <laughs> um, dairy. Dairy? I'm allergic to cats, that's why I just stopped eating them. Um, and then uh, here would be like neutrophils <laughs> for like bacteria. And then we have like, these are uh, basophils for like histamines and stuff like that. Here we have erythrocytes, right, red blood cells. They let us breathe. <clears throat> so my job though is to focus on this, abnormalities, right? So if there was something abnormal on the machine, we'd make a slide and I would look at the, the blood cells. This looks more, more like a thalassemia, maybe a DIC, someone who was electrocuted. We can see here that there's some erythropoiesis, meaning that the bone marrow that you guys just talked about, how, it's, how, how that is formed in the bone, is pushing out immature red cells. It's got a nucleus. Hopefully the spleen can come in and take this out, but that's why these helmet cells are being formed. These fragment cells are suspicious for um, blood clots. Or this, we looked at that other thing. This is an immature cell, okay, a blast. Whereas this is an adult, this band would be a high school student. This uh, meta would probably be like a you know, junior high student. And then we have promyocyte, maybe someone in you know, elementary school. Blasts are infants, you know, very, very dangerous blood reading. Uh, this is what we're getting with cancer. So. This is uh, CLL. You guys are about 18 or younger. You guys have lots of lymphocytes. But you can see that this, this lymph, it's got kind of like a soccer ball. If I were to turn the lights down, you'd see kind of dark little spots, chocolate chip cookies everywhere and these smudged cells. So this is a condition known as a chronic lymphocytic leukemia. Two days ago I had a patient that had this. I had to call the pathologist, get the number one. We did the flow on it and actually admitted the patient um, to get them taken care of. Um, lymphocytes make antibodies, whereas those other things take care of other things. The issue with this is they're making lots of them and they may not work properly. 
And then if you were to get a bacterial infection, you may not have enough of the right type of white cell to help fight those things. So it leaves you slightly immunocompromised. Um, so the prognosis of that, okay? So you might have another department like blood bank. So I like to do, anyone like to do dangerous things? What's a dangerous thing someone likes to do? I ride motorcycles and ski. Anything else? Okay. I roller skate. Roller skate. Side, so. That that's dangerous. So what what can happen here is this: if you get uh, hurt and you actually start bleeding, we can replace your blood volume, or you can actually bleed out all of your clotting factors and we put platelets some clotting factors back in your body. We had a patient; uh, they were hemorrhaging, and uh, we put 18 units. They were ble they were bleeding out their own, not their own blood; they were gone. We did a mass transfusion; we changed their entire blood volume. Okay. And so we had to put platelets and chronic factors back in their bodies so they could actually plug those holes until we could actually work on them. So pretty, pretty crazy stuff. Okay? All right, let's get back into the education stuff so you can do your reports. Do you think we have until just before the running? Let's see. We have till 10.50. 10.50? Okay. We'll, we're, we're right on it. Okay, so... 17 uh, minutes. So we have education. You can do this either on campus or online. And you can get your medical laboratory assistant certificate. If you do it online, you're going to need to get in linked with some sort of like laboratory or hospital to do this. And the university can kind of help negotiate those. But a two-year degree is called your associates for a medical laboratory technician. And then your medical laboratory science degree is four years. You have to apply to the program to get in for the two-year degree. And then you have to apply again to get back into the four-year degree. Um, the difference between these, you do basically the same thing. This opens more doors for like management and other opportunities. Also, you can work on uh, highly complex stuff and do some things that someone else can't do, such as review, um, do validations, and stuff like that. Also, the responsibility here, it goes up, right? So if you're committing fraud or doing something illegal or whatever, the penalties fall harder. Now, I work under a pathologist anyway, or a medical director, and so um, that's kind of the breakdown of the school. Okay. Can I continue on? Okay. So Weber State University, do we need to turn on the lights? So yeah, is, I can't even see that purple. Yeah, that is really, really Should put dark. put a white edge around that, aren't it? Yeah, I'll, I'll throw that on there. Okay, so we have Weber State University. Has This is where I went. We did simulation labs while I was learning the theory in the book work. I got to do research and short hospital rotations when I graduated from each, each uh, um, of the, the programs that I did. Whereas the University of Utah, Brigham Young University, do two years of theory, they just hit the books real hard. And then they're six months late for the hospital, right? They're working for free. And so I really enjoyed this. So this is like learning painting theory and getting to paint at the same time. Whereas this is, we do lots and lots of theory and then we start practicing. And I, I really enjoyed this, if that makes sense, okay? So, what you have to do is there's prerequisites just to apply. I actually had to do five-year degree because I was one class short when I applied. And because it's a year cycle, I had to wait an entire year for the program to offer the classes again. 